Hi, my name is Che Hang Yu. Thank the uh, SLB organizing committee for the invitation and give me this opportunity to present here. I'm a postdoc working for Professor Spencer Smith at the uh, University of California, Santa Barbara in the US. My title today is dual band to photon excitation dual region imaging with subcellular re uh, resolution across 25 uh, square millimeters field of view. The title describes the unique features of our newly developed two photon microscopy for brain imaging. And I would like to take this opportunity to introduce this new system to you. Two photon microscopy has been a very useful optical imaging tool that can measure neuronal activity in the brain of living animals. The movie shows very typical two photon calcium imaging gradually stepping deep into a mouse brain. It demonstrates that two photon imaging can penetrate uh, deep into the brain while providing a single neuron resolution and having a high enough temporal resolution to record neuronal activity. In addition, two-photon uh, two microscopy is a kind of fluorescence microscopy. Its imaging contrast is from the uh, genetic, genetically encoded fluorescence proteins or chemical dyes, and this is greatly benefit from the uh, fluorescence toolbox that can specifically label several mo molecules in, a pa in parallel and study their dynamics and interactions. However, conventional two photon microscopy has a field of view typically around 500 by 500 microns, like the movie shows here. And this size of field of view is fairly small compared to the size of the mouse brain. If we scale this field of view to the size of the mouse brain on left, it only fits within one functional area. Therefore, to simultaneously record neuronal activities at uh, different areas is nearly impossible using conventional two-photon microscopy. As you can see from the cartoon, that uh, these functional areas are widely dist distributed across the entire brain at the millimeter scale. Since we know that neurons work together across different areas to decode the information and drive the uh, behaviors, being able to simultaneously record neuronal activities across different functional areas is one of the keys to understand how brain works. Therefore, to enable this type of experiment, we developed a new two-photon microscope. The full name of our microscope is Dual Independent Enhanced Scan Engines Large Field Two-Photon Microscopy. We refer to the system as the digital tube system. The digital tube system has two major features. First, it has a five by five millimeter field of view to encompass multiple cortical areas and provides a neuronal resolution throughout. The system is optimized for two excitation wavelengths uh, centered at 910 nanometer and 1040 nanometer. These two wavelengths are the most popular wavelengths of two photon light source and the most compatible with many fluorescence tools. Secondly, the digital tube system can perform simultaneous two-region imaging, and especially it can configure the imaging parameters of each region independently. For example, the two imaging regions can have different frame rates, uh, scan, size, uh, scan region sizes, and even scanning patterns. The imaging par parameters can be individually optimized to meet, meet the imaging uh, requirements from different uh, brain regions. So how do we achieve these uh, specifications? To have a large field of view, we custom design the entire uh, optical system, including the scan lengths, the tube lengths, and the objective lengths using the ZMAX optical uh, design software. And I would like to highlight that, that Dr. Jeffrey Sturman is the designer of this system. The design rule is to minimize the wavefront errors of both the 9 nanometer and 1040 nanometer wavelengths at the focal plane across the entire field of view. The optical design of the digital to be system is fully open source, and you can find the uh, full design uh, result in our bioarchive preprints. To evaluate the uh, design results, we plotted two maps of thorough ratio over the uh, five by five millimeter areas at the nine ten nanometer and ten forty nanometer uh, wavelengths. The value of thorough ratio indicates how close a point spread function is diffraction limited. 
as the threshold ratio is larger than 0 0.8, the point wave function is usually viewed as being diffracted, diffraction limited. Uh, for uh, both of the maps, the yellowish colors are the regions with threshold ratio larger than 0 0.8 and nearly occupy the entire uh, square except for the four small corners. Therefore, these two maps shows that uh, the diesel 2 p system has a diffraction uh, limited regions of nearly, of nearly 25 square millimeter area, and the system is achromatic both at the 9 nanometer and 1040 nanometer wavelengths. So to perform simultaneous dual region imaging, we set up two sets of scanning engines to, uh, uh, to access two areas simultaneously and each pathway of the scan engine can arbitrarily position the imaging location within the full field of view and scan with parameters that are completely independent from the other pathway. So in order to be able to discern the uh, emitted photons coming from which of these two imaging areas, we made the bin lates from the two uh, pathways arrive at the sample one after the other with a fixed time delay. So these two bin lates are separated in time and this process is called temporal multiplexing. The time delay was determined by the repetition rate of the light source and it is half of the interpose period, uh, period of the uh, light source. The time delay is achieved by splitting the input uh, laser into two bin lates and making one of them travel in a longer distance before it's, uh, it's arriving at the scan engine. And before, uh, because of this time delay between the two bin lates, the generated photons from the two imaging regions are also separated in time. Therefore, one single photomultiplier will receive emission photons from these two imaging regions uh, alternatively. And since we know the modulation time of the excitation uh, laser pulses, we can demultiplex the signal by assigning the detected photons to the corresponding uh, imaging regions based on time. So in this manner, we can achieve simultaneous two-region imaging with one excitation light source and one photomultiplier tube. We can introduce a second light source, 1040 nanometer, into the system and also temporarily multiplex it in the same way as 910 nanometer does. The emission photons excited by 910 nanometer and 1040 nanometer are spectrally separated. So we can use the Dikirk mirror to separate them and set up a second photomultiplier tube to specifically receive photons excited by 1040 nanometer. The two photomultiplier tubes outputs are demultiplexed based on their own laser modulation time. So taking everything together, we can image two regions of interests simultaneously, configure their imaging parameters independently, and have each region illuminated with two excitation wavelengths at the same time. Here is the detailed layout of the diesel 2 p system. It shows the uh, arrangement of the two pulse lasers and their delay line. The two sets of scan engines merged with the polarization bin splitter and also the two photo uh, multiplier tubes corresponding to each light source. I also would like to highlight that uh, the diesel 2 p system is equipped with two deformer mirrors in the two sets of scan engines. The deformer mirrors can not only work as adaptive optics to correct optical aberrations, but also perform rapid uh, remote focusing to change the focal plane for volumetric, uh, volumetric imaging. And I will talk about this more in a bit. These are the 3D models of the digital 2 p system showing you its arrangement of uh, the two scan en scanning engines where the two pathways merge before the objective and its overall dimensions. After we set up the system, we first tested diesel 2 piece uh, field of view by imaging a fluorescent sample with periodic lines on it. And the uh, periodicity is five lines per millimeter. And from the images, we can count 25 lines along both the uh, X direction and the Y direction. And they are equal to five millimeter in length uh, on each side. 
And the result demonstrates that the diesel two bit system indeed has a five by five millimeter field of view consistent with the nominal uh, model performance. Next, we wonder whether this five millimeter long imaging field curved or flat at the imaging plane. So to test this, to test this, we took a Z-stack image over a thin sample. Uh, if there is a curved field, a curved field, we will uh, we will see a curved profile in the uh, XZ imaging plane. In contrast, if there is a flat field, we will be able to see a flat profile, nearly like a straight uh, horizontal line on the on the right. So um, the fluorescent sample I just used is a flat and thin sample whose thickness in Z is about uh, 30 microns. And we took a Z stack image over this sample and, uh, and, uh, and plot its uh, XZ and YZ cross sections in the bottom. Uh, I draw two uh, straight lines uh, uh, overlap on top of these two cross section images and I found that the thing for resonance cross section is nearly collinear with this, uh, two, uh, these straight lines. The result suggests that uh, the diesel 2B system has a flat field with the field curvatures smaller than 30 microns over a, a five millimeter field of view. Next, we mentioned the diesel 2P system's uh, uh, point spread function at 910 nanometer and 1040 nanometer across the field of view and at the different depth. For this, we imaged 0.2 micron bits embedded in the egg gel at the depth of 70, 250, and 500 microns below the cover slope. At each depth, bits at four locations are measured. They are on axis, 2.5 millimeter off axis in X and Y, and as, a, as well as three millimeter off axis toward to the corner. For each bit at each location, the former mirrors are applied as adaptive optics to optimize the point square function. Uh, the movie shows you uh, the process of the optimization the first 11 orders of Zanaki modes uh, listed below are applied and modulated sequentially over a total of three rounds to maximize the brightness or the contrast of the signal. And after the deformed mirror uh, optimization, we did the Z stack image over the beats to measure the points of function in three dimensions. So here are the examples of the lateral and axial 910 nanometer excitation point to function measured at four different locations in the depth of 500 microns with the uh, adaptive optics applied. Uh, we plotted the XY, XZ, and the YZ cross sections uh, respectively. And you can see that the uh, overall shape and size of the point to function stay similar across the field of view the bottom figure shows the uh, measured points of function of the 910, um, uh, sorry, 940 nanometer wavelength. The overall shape also uh, stays similar across the field of view. In, uh, in addition, the 910 nanometer and 1040 nanometer points of function are very similar to each other, demonstrating that the diesel 2 system can perform well simultaneously at these two optimized wavelengths. And this chart shows you the statistical summary of uh, lateral point square function measured from the four locations at the depth of uh, 70 microns for the first pathway. The green bar is 910 nanometer and the red bar is 1040 nanometer. The arrow bar is the standard deviation calculated from uh, five to eight beats. Uh, the chart below shows the summary of the actual resolution at the depth of 70 microns. The same measurements are performed at the depth of 250 microns and 500 microns, as well as for the second light path. Overall, the resolution is one micron laterally and eight microns axially across the uh, four five millimeter field of view uh, and up to 500 micron of imaging depth for both 910 nanometer and 1040 nanometer. Uh, so this result shows uh, the, that the uh, digital 2 system maintains a consistent uh, resolution throughout the uh, large field of view. To further demonstrate 
the functionality of the digital tube system we performed in vivo imaging of a mouse expressing the genetically encoded calcium indicator GCAM6. The image shows that the brain tissue under five millimeter diameter cranial window can be readily imaged uh, under digital two piece uh, two, five by five millimeter field of view. If we uh, zoom into um, different locations of our brain, we can see the neurons are individually uh, resolved. To further test the digital two piece uh, to subcellular resolving power, we also performed in vivo imaging of a mouse expressing Taiwan GLP to look at the uh, new rights and found that the dendritic spines were uh, also clearly resolved at the depth of 62 microns and 288 microns. These results together confirm that the digital tube system preserves uh, subcellular resolution throughout the uh, field of view. The digital 2P has another important functionality that is simultaneous dual region imaging. For the following couple of slides, I would like to show you some example exper experiments that are allowed by the digital 2P system. For example, two pathways can be positioned next to each other and each pathway covers a large field of view. The two movies on the left uh, shows that two light paths scan uh, two different areas simultaneously simultaneously, and each one covers 1.5 millimeter by 5 millimeter field of view. Importantly, we set a high pixel number to, uh, for each area, and uh, we still have a decent imaging speed of uh, 3.85 frames per second. The zooming view in the bottom shows that the individual neurons can be clearly resolved by each pathway, and the calcium activity can be well uh, captured. The heat map on the right shows the uh, transients of about 6,000 uh, neurons detected from these two areas combined. And this result shows that the uh, digital 2 system can maintain both a high pixel resolution and a high temporal resolution, even when scanning over a large field of view. The digital 2 system also has very high flexibility that is uh, that it can not only position the two pathways independently, but also configure them differently. For example, uh, the figure illustrates that the two pathways are positioned to image distant uh, sub-areas within the large field of view. Uh, the movie shows the new neuronal activity recorded by these two pathways uh, simultaneously, and they have different imaging configurations. Pathway 1 images a larger area with a low frame rate, whereas uh, Pathway 2 images a, a smaller area with a higher frame rate. The two pathways also can be overlapped with no limitation on the shortest uh, distance. In this example, Pathway 1 and 2 are overlapped, having the Pathway 1 images a larger area, while having the uh, Pathway 2 image a sub-area of the Pathway 1. Again, they have different imaging configurations. We also can increase the number of imaging regions within one single imaging section by repositioning the pathway between two or more subregions. In this example, the pathway one is configured to alternate between two subareas, and the pathway two alternates between another two subareas. So we can image four subareas within an imaging section. In addition, I would like to highlight that we also can set two pathways to image different uh, imaging depth using the deformer mirror, and I will talk about this later. Not only rest scanning, the pathway can be configured to do, to do the random access uh, imaging. In this example, we configure the pathway one to do the uh, standard rest scanning and the pathway two to do uh, random access imaging for 12 regions of interest. We can also have each imaging region illuminated with two excitation wavelengths of 910 nanometer and 1040 nanometer at the same time when we perform dual region imaging. The movies show you that we image two regions inside the fixed mouse kidney section. This sample has two molecules labeled with two different uh, fluorescent dyes. And these two dyes can be uh, excited by 910 nanometer and 1040 nanometer respectively. 
Therefore, in each region, we can see the localizations of two different labeled molecules at the same time. Therefore, the digital tube system has a dual excitation, dual region imaging capability. So I hope that the above example, ex exa uh, example experiments of simultaneous dual region imaging demonstrate the utility of the digital 2 p system. Next, I would like to show you that the digital 2 p system can also perform volumetric imaging using the uh, equipped deformer mirrors. By changing the curvature of the deformer mirror and thus the divergence of light into the objective, the imaging depth can be changed. The movie on the right shows the XY images scanning at different imaging depth using the deformer mirror. The change in depth is very fast, taking only about 75 microseconds, which is even shorter than the light scan time. Not only change the imaging plane, the deformer mirror can act actively compensate for the wavefront errors and thus help enhance the imaging contrast. For example, we tried to challenge the digital 2 p system by imaging the neuronal activity at the very corner of the field of view and at the depth of almost 500 microns, where the uh, optical performance drops significantly to, uh, according to the thrill ratio map, and the tissue-induced optical scattering is uh, very severe there. <clears throat> the point square function is is, is uh, is expected to distort greatly there. And thus, we got a low contrast image shown here. Uh, however, we were able to turn on the uh, deformer mirror and adjust it. And we found that the contrast can be greatly enhanced. Not only more neurons are detected, the neuron pairs can also be resolved. In comparison, we only vaguely see these neuron pairs when the deformer mirror is off. The charts on the right uh, shows the uh, profiles of the two selected, selected regions on the images. And then we can see the uh, signal to noise ratio is indeed greatly improved when the deformer mirror is on. Here is a movie show you, uh, showing you the effect of wavefront corrections by turning on and off the deformer mirror when we image the very corner of the field and at the depth of 400, uh, 500, uh, 400 microns. And we can see that there is a pronounced contrast enhancement with the use of the deformer mirror. If we quantify the mean fluorescence intensity of the images over time, we can see that the mean intensity is doubled when the uh, adaptive optics is on uh, than that uh, when the uh, uh, adaptive optic is off. So this result shows that with the add-on of the uh, deformer mirror as an adaptive optic, uh, the, the digital 2 p system can Im image better in a wider field of view and in a deeper part of the tissue. In conclusion, I have presented you our newly developed two-photon microscopy dual independent enhanced scan engines, large field two-photon microscopy digital 2 p it provides neuronal resolution across 5 by 500 millimeter field of view, encompassing uh, multiple cortical areas. It is achromatic at 9 nanometer and 1040 nanometer, which can be greatly leveraged from the fluorescence technology. It performs simultaneous dual region imaging with the two pathway independently positionable across the entire field of view and different depth. They are repositionable uh, re within an imaging session and they can be differently configured. The digital 2 p system is equipped with deformer mirrors to perform rapid defocusing for volumetric imaging and wavefront error correction uh, for the enhancement of signals. Last but not least, uh, the digital 2 p is an open source system and please come to check out the uh, detailed design in our bioarchive preprint currently or nature communications soon. Finally, I would like to thank my advisor, Spencer and Ikuko for their guidance on this project. I also would like to recognize that Jeff, our former postdoc, is the uh, uh, primary designer of the digital 2 system. I also would like to thank EE -E for preparing the animals and Ryan for taking care of the other means. 
Also, thank the uh, funding agencies for the funding uh, uh, support. And thank you all for your attention. And thank the uh, SLB organizing committee for the invitation again.